Hi everybody, this is Steve Grizzetti again, your man from Movie Picks, and here we are in part two of our eight-part tutorial series we're calling Basic Training for Premier Elements. In part one, we looked at the Quick View workspace. Here in part two, we're beginning our look into the Advanced workspace, which, again, don't be intimidated by the word advanced. It simply is a more powerful timeline. You can add countless numbers of tracks to the video and the audio. You can do a lot more mixing, do a lot more special effects. You can create a lot more things in the Advanced workspace. But before we get going, why don't we start a new project in Premiere Elements? And starting a new project is something you want to think about because you want to think about how you're going to use your video when you output it. Let's go up to the File menu in the upper left-hand corner, select New Project. We won't save this current project. You want to think about how you're going to use your project. Are you going to use it in social media? Are you going to output a DVD? Are you going to output a movie? Are you going to output a movie that you're going to watch on television or on a phone? All these things you should consider because there are a number of options for creating your project and planning ahead can make a big difference. You notice that there are many aspect ratios available, well, actually three aspect ratios that are available here in the program. For creating your project. One is the basic 16 by 9 and that comes in a variety of resolutions. 16 by 9 is what you see on your television set, right? Wider than it is tall. That's the way you shoot with a camcorder and that's the way you shoot when your phone is held sideways as all good videographers always shoot with their phone. If you shoot with your phone upright, there's the portrait aspect ratio. And if you create video for social media sites, maybe you want to create a square video. And here you've got some options for doing that also. If you aren't quite sure what the dimensions are that you want to use, just go over here to the social media drop down menu and select how you're going to use your video. And it will automatically create your video in the proper aspect ratio. Now you notice right down here at the bottom of this screen, it says force selected project preset to this project. You'll want to check that if you're creating something other than the aspect ratio and resolution of the video you're adding as your source media. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to leave that unchecked. I'm going to go ahead and create a video that's taller than it is wide. And I'm going to name my project, let's call it Planes. And now we'll add my media, and this is media shot with the camcorder. It's 16 by 9, 1920 by 1080. And you'll notice that when I add it to my timeline, watch what happens. The first time I add a clip to the timeline, the very first clip, I get a message saying, do I want to change my video's aspect ratio or the project settings to match the video itself? You're always going to get the best performance when your project settings match your video specs. So in this case, I've got widescreen 16 by 9. That's my source media. That's the video I'm going to load into my project. However, my project is right now set up for 9 by 16, taller than it is wide. I'm going to select the option to change the sequence settings. And now my project settings are automatically matched to my video specs. I'll get the best performance and the best quality output from this. Now again, there's situations where you're going to be shooting with one kind of camcorder or one kind of device and you're going to want to output for social media or you want to output something that's square or taller than it is wide. You can do that if you check that box on the new project window that says force these settings on the new project or you select the option not to change project settings when you add the new media to the timeline. These little windows that pop open by the way can be resized if you'd like. You can reshape them. So when you open one you may in some cases need it to be wider or narrower just by dragging on the little seam between the uh, panels. And in some cases, you can actually, for instance, the timeline, if I hold down the control key or the command key on a Mac, I can actually drag it right out of the workspace. And if I've got two monitor panels, I can spread this out among two monitor panels and spread all of my windows out and create a custom workspace. If I get too lost by creating too many floating windows, all I need to do is go up to the window menu at the top of the panel and select Restore Workspace, and it puts it back to its default setting. So again, it's designed to be nice and efficient here with windows that open and close as you need them, but you can also customize your workspace as needed there too. Now you notice that when I added media to my project, 
that this media went to a holding area here called Project Assets. We didn't see that in the quick view, but we see that in the advanced view. This is much more like a professional video editor. As the media is added to your Project Assets panel, you create a library and then you drag that library down here to the timeline to create your movie. And in our next session here of our eight part series, we're going to take a look at how to use this timeline, how to place our video on the timeline, how to rearrange it, and then how to insert and trim our media clips.